Hey, friends all over the world. I have to make this quick live. It's about to be 6 p.m. And at 6.30, we're going to go into a time of prayer. You can join us on live every, every Saturday at 6.30. But I want to talk about real quickly the great falling away and the spirit called messy. The great falling away and the spirit called messy. Um, th this is, this is really important and really heavy. And I want to share this with you. Like I said, it's not going to be a long live. Go ahead and tag a friend real quick. Uh, tag somebody, tag a pastor, tag a leader, tag somebody that you care about. Cause I want to talk about this, the great falling away. Now I've, I've done a, I've done several videos, several teachings on this throughout the years and even several, uh, messages on this recently about what I believe that we're in, the great falling away. Now, um, 2 Thessalonians, um, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 is going to be one of the texts that I read from. So, because I really want you to understand, uh, what this is, this is all about. Um, the great falling away. Paul the Apostle writes a letter. Please listen to this video. He writes a letter to the Thessalonians who are concerned about the end of days. They're concerned about the what they call in Greek the parousia or the second coming of Jesus. And, and Paul assures them that that day will not come except there first be a great falling away. And he, he uses the Greek word apostasia apostasia. And the word apostasia means to defect. D-E-F-E-C-T. C-T or C-T-I-O-N. Defection or to defect. Defecting um, is a term that's used in the military. A defector is somebody that abandons the front. They abandon the army. They abandon the front line. And during days of war, back in the day, defecting was a very serious crime. In fact, sometimes it was punishable by, de punishable by death, uh, by death to defect. Um, uh, the word defect also means a defect means a shortcoming or an imperfection or a lack. Okay, shortcoming or imperfection. So this is what we call, um, uh, what do you call it in, in English? Words that sound the same, they have a different meaning. I think it's called homonym or something like that. But the point is that the word defect means to abandon or to withdraw. It also means to go to the opposing team or the opposing army. In other words, you, you, you leave your fidelity to one's country or to one's military and you go to the other side, you go to the other team. You, you now begin to work for the team. Synonym, I'm sorry, not homonym. It's the word synonym. But, but no, that's not the word I'm looking for. What, let me, what's the word? Anyway, let's, I don't, I don't want to waste time with this. But it means to go to the opposite team or to withdraw, or to abandon. And the word defect means an imperfection. In other words, same word, different definitions. It's spelled and sounds very similar, but different definitions. And Paul the Apostle says that one of the signs of the last days will be apostasy. Apostasy. Now, this is twofold. I need you to hear me very quickly. On the one hand, we're going to see people in the last days abandon the faith, which was once delivered to the saints. In other words, the doctrine of salvation. You're going to have people teaching strange and heretical doctrines or apostate doctrines that Jesus is not the only way to salvation and that Jesus didn't die on the cross and all this kind of stuff. Everybody can be saved whether they believe in Jesus or not. You know, the whole you know, the whole universalism or the whole gospel of inclusion is a form of apostasy that has been prophesied would take place in the last days. So that's a form of the apostasy, meaning people will abandon 
the doctrine of salvation. They will abandon the gospel. They will abandon the faith. They will abandon righteousness. They will abandon holiness. They will abandon truth. Truth will no longer be upheld as the standard anymore. The word of God will no longer be the final authority for these individuals. A homophone. That's what I was looking for. I knew it was a, I said a homonym, a homophone. That's what I was trying to figure out. Thank y'all. A homophone. Words that sound the same, but have different meaning. I had a brain fart there for a minute. I knew what it meant. A homophone. That's what I was looking for. Anyway, so this word, homophonically, when we talk about a defector, is someone who will abandon. They will abandon the front. They will abandon the truth. They will abandon the word of God. They will abandon the gospel. But then <clears throat> the word defect, and I'm playing on words semantically, the word defect means a shortcoming or an imperfection. Oh man, this is heavy. I don't know if y'all are ready for this. There will be a an obsession with shortcomings and imperfections in the last days. On the one hand, there were people who will justify shortcomings and justify sin and try to say, you know what, it's not all that serious. You know, let's just love everybody. You no, know, it doesn't matter, you know, whether people fall short or not. Let's love everyone. But then there'll be another group of people who actually will become the ones that focus their attention and their ministry and their energy on the shortcomings of others. They will build entire ministries on shortcomings, the entire ethos of their ministry. The thing that gets them going, that drives them, that the thing that, that, that uh, uh, gives them life, if you will, the things that, that excites them will be shortcomings will be shortcomings. That, that's, that's, that will be their focus. It will not be the gospel. It won't be the truth. It won't be the word of God. It won't be the love of God. It won't be teaching the word, nor will it be demonstrating the power of God. They will build their entire identity and ministry on shortcomings. And this brings me to the other point of this message as I get ready to close. There's a spirit that we're going to see called the spirit of messy. And unfortunately, many have already been infected by this demonic spirit. It's a spirit. There is a spirit of messy. In fact, one of, I believe one of the signs of the times that we're living in is that ministry has become messy. We have now used the word ministry synonymously with messy so that we got messy ministers. We got people who are full of mess, who keep up mess, who look for mess, who profit off of mess. They are messy. Everything about them, you can see it in their eyes. You can see it in their demeanor. You can see it in their Facebook posts. You can see it in the words they speak. They are messy. There's a spirit called messy that has grabbed hold of the hearts of of those who have departed from God. When, you, when you're a messy person, it's actually a sign that you are not dwelling in the secret place. You're not dwelling in the secret place. You're not spending time with the Lord. And I'm telling you, the reason why we have so many messy ministers and messy prophets and prophetesses and messy pastors and messy apostles is because they have not they have abandoned their post. They have defected from the call of God upon their life. I'm not talking about defending the faith. I'm not talking about defending the faith. I'm not talking about being an apologist, one who gives an answer for the hope that lies within us. I'm not talking about somebody that calls out sin and calls out wickedness. I believe that we as apostolic leaders and prophetic people have a responsibility to address sin, to address false teaching and false teachers. Paul the apostle did it. I'm not dealing with that. I'm talking about being messy. And you know there's a difference. There's a, there's a spirit of messy that has grabbed hold. It is literally 
grip the hearts of people. And this happens when we are, are, are those who are guilty of apostasia. Apostasia. In other words, there's an abandoning from the call of God, an abandoning from the post, an abandoning from one's assignment. God has called us to the place of prayer. He's called us to the place of intercession. He has called us to the secret place. And I'm telling you, there will be things that God reveals in the secret place. There'll be things he tells us and he will give us the grace to release those things. And he will give us the authority and the boldness to release them. So I want to be clear because sometimes people think, oh, well, no, are you saying we shouldn't do? No. And this is, but see, that's the spirit of messy. See, a messy person doesn't understand balance. They're messy. It's either one or the other. In other words, either, either you are uh, being messy with them or you're compromised. That's how they see it. You know what? If you don't, if you don't get into this mess with me, that means that you're not a real leader. You're not a real apostle. You're not, they're just messy. And a lot of them deal with bitterness. It's a deep bitterness in their soul. They're bitter. They're angry with God. They're angry with people. They're hurt. They're disappointed. They've been abused. And because of their woundedness, it's caused them to experience this apostasia where they're, they've, they've, they're, they're departing from faith. They're departing from the presence of God. That's why there's no anointing when they minister. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost already. They don't have an anointing when they minister. There's no anointing. There's no grace. There's no power. People don't get delivered when they speak. People don't get set free in their services. People don't get touched. They don't even... Focus on salvation. Very rarely do you hear about them winning souls to the Lord or, or getting people delivered or walking people through deliverance or how many people were healed in their meetings. There's, that will no longer be the emphasis in the last days. The emphasis will be on mess. How messy you can be. How, how messy, how much mess you can keep up and, and how much mess you can talk about and that's, that's not the spirit of God. You cannot convince me. There's not a person here that can convince me that that's the Holy Spirit. You can't. Because I know the Holy Spirit. I've been saved since 1996. I know what the Holy Spirit is. You can't convince me that that's the Holy Ghost. Because that ain't him. Is God a God of righteousness, justice, judgment? Absolutely. Psalm 89 makes it clear. Justice and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Mercy and truth go before him. But, but ministry does not mean messy, nor does ministry have to mean misery. And I'm telling you, Jesus says that one of the signs of the last times, many will be offended. And he says, because iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold. First Corinthians 13 is the, is the barometer. That's the barometer. I'm sorry, that's Psalm 86. I said Psalm 89. Let me look at that because y'all trying to check me. Come on now, I'm going to put justice and judgment. I just want to make sure I'm right now, because I want to, you know, they'll write to you and, and check you. Yeah, I was right. Psalm 89, verse 14. That's not Psalm 86. Don't y'all correct me no more with, with the wrong scripture. Psalm 89, verse 14. Okay, so I'm to, there's a spirit of messy, and beware of this spirit. Avoid it. One thing about my wife and I, we can't stand drama. I don't like dramatic people. I don't like messy people. I don't like people that keep up mess. If you want to be a messy person, lose my number. I don't like mess. There's one. There's ministry and then there's mess. And, and, and I'm telling you, a lot of people have allowed the spirit of messy to grab hold of their mind. That's why they love it. They live off of it. They drink from it. They delve into it. They delve into it. They keep it up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Chaos, confusion. Bitterness, strife, division. 
he said, she said, gossip, slander. They peddle in this. And it is not God, okay? It is a sign that the heart has departed from the Lord. I love y'all. Remember, Jesus is Lord. Bye-bye.